Aloha, top of the morning friends and family. Today we're gonna to talk about feeding live rodents to your snakes versus feeding frozen rodents to your snakes. The benefits, the pitfalls, all of the above. And if this is your first time on the channel, we upload beautifully edited cinematic masterpieces here, but this video is uncut. And in today's Uncut, before we get into our topic, I'd just like to thank all of you for your prayers out there for Noah and his poison oak all over his face. Lord willing, we will have a Music Monday for you this coming week, and he's feeling better enough to do so. Um, also, before we get into our topic, please, a uh, quick shout out to our sponsors, Morph Market. Go check out their website if you don't have an account already. It's free. You can also download their app, and they're making all kinds of new things. We'll have lots of announcements for them coming forward. We'll also be seeing them at the Arlington Show coming up here in February. Of course, Freedom Breeder, a longtime channel sponsor. If you are in the Midwest or in the, the East Coast, and you've really wanted to get Freedom Breeder Rack, but the shipping is just too expensive, go take a look at the website, get a hold of those guys. They will be attending the two shows this year, the October Tinley and the uh, Daytona Show in August. So if you want to get free shipping to those shows, the trucks are filling up pretty quickly. In fact, they might be full already. I'm not sure, but the only one way to find out and really save yourself sometimes up to thousands of dollars on the shipping, depending on what you're getting. So let's talk about this. Let me say where I've been at for a while on feeding live rodents versus feeding frozen thawed rodents to snakes. I got my first pet snake when I was four. And from the ages of four years old till I was about in my mid twenties, I fed only live Ever. Never fed a frozen thought. Didn't even know feeding frozen thought rodents was a thing at that point. I uh, had zero issues. Now, keep in mind, I, I had mo only colubrids at that time. They're a little bit more go get them than, say, something like a ball python here. Um, and I also watched every time. I mean, it was one of the most exciting and interesting things that I've, I still to this day, I think, is just the most interesting, exciting thing to watch a snake eat. And live did make it a little extra exciting, especially as a kid growing up. I used to bring my snake to a show and tell at the science class in elementary school and we'd feed it a live rat. I bet you can't do that today, but we did. And it was uh, quite interesting and it's always interested me. So I bring up the point that I was watching because if you are feeding live, I think there are three main concerns that come up, three, three topics you could talk about. Uh, safety, convenience, and cost. I think those are probably the most important three things that people would think about when deciding whether or not to feed live or frozen thought. So with live, the watching part is important because your snake can get harmed. In fact, this right here is Maya, a coral glow ball python, and she was actually the second ball python we got when we moved back from Hawaii to start keeping snakes. And at that time, I was feeding live when I first moved back because it's all I knew. And I was still watching. I was even watching, you know, to this, to this day, I still watch my snakes eat. It's just, it's just fascinating. I highly uh, encourage it if you haven't seen it happen before. It's pretty cool. Um, but she took a bite to the head while I was sitting there watching it happen. I was watching, she grabbed the rat and just kind of caught it on the side, like by its shoulder. Rat reached around with his head, <sighs> sunk its big old teeth right into the top of her head. And she still actually has a tiny little scar there. You probably can't quite see it in this video, especially since my focus is going all haywire and the snakes are running away from the camera. Sorry about that, Maya. But anyway, there's a tiny, a tiny little scar that you can still see on her head, just barely. But, so she's okay, obviously, but uh, it was pretty traumatic for me and probably really traumatic for her. I, I remember she was a bit shooken up, just like, wow, I just got bit in the head and I'm bleeding. Um, so safety is the main issue. I have heard people say that, you know, you could have an issue with a, a too old of a feeder. Uh, when you're talking about frozen thawed and like pass some kind of problem onto the snake, I've never heard of that actually taking place. Not saying it hasn't. If you have, or if you have any thoughts about this subject at all, I'd love to read your comments down below. It's a, it's a topic that has a wide range of opinions and I, I'm open to hearing all of them. So please drop them down below. I'd love to hear your take on, on this subject. So frozen thawed, as long as you're getting fresh animals, you know, they're, they're freshly frozen, you're not having issues. There's very reputable breeders out there uh, for rodents for feeding. The two that I've always used are either Cold Blooded Cafe out in the Midwest or Lane Labs right here in my, in my uh, home county here in California. So great companies out there that have very fresh rodents that you shouldn't have an issue with as long as you're not like doing something weird like refreezing them after they've already been thawed out. I wouldn't recommend doing that. 
And another thing is the frozen rodents seem to, they've, they've already started to break down just a little bit. That is true. So um, I find that the snakes might have a slightly easier time digesting them as, as some of the digesting is already starting to take place since the rodent is already, already dead. Um, but as far as safety goes, that's about it. You know, you got you to gotta be mindful, especially if you're talking about something like a very docile species like ball python. I've seen horrible pictures of ball pythons that have just been eaten like half alive by rodents that were just left unattended because the snake decided it didn't want to eat, which is a thing that happens with ball pythons sometimes. And I mean, the rodents will literally just eat away at the snake. They're like, okay, if the snake's, I, got it, I didn't get eaten by the snake, I'm gonna eat the snake back. And like, it's just some horrendous pictures. So safety, I think it's much safer to feed frozen thawed for that reason. Uh, you know, you might get a weird one, every one of thousands of frozen thawed rodents cause some kind of issue in your snake's stomach, I guess. Um, but you can definitely have your snake eaten by a live rodent. So safety-wise, definitely want to stick to uh, frozen thawed, especially if you don't have time to sit there and watch all of your snakes eat. Um, Convenience-wise, it can go either way. Uh, you could have live that you're breeding yourself. So if that's the case and you're breeding your own live rodents, I think it would be highly convenient to just grab one of the rodents you've bred and toss it on in the enclosure and watch the snake take take hold and that seems like a pretty convenient way to go for me. If you're not breeding your own rodents, like I'm not, then I think that it's much more convenient to have a freezer full of rodents that you can just thaw out when it's feeding time rather than having to go to the store and get live every time you want to feed your animals, which I have started doing with some of my baby ball pythons actually. Some of the ones that really seem like they don't want to take frozen thought off the bat, I will go get live hopper mice um, for, for those situations just to get them eating a little quicker and then switch them over to frozen thawed before we ever introduce them to the market. But that is something to consider as well, um, the convenience factor. And then the cost factor. If you're breeding your own, you're probably saving a bit. I mean, surely a lot of time goes into breeding rodents, which is one of the big reasons that I don't do it myself. I personally don't want to put the time into working with rodents and breeding them for food production, I'd rather pay somebody, oh, sorry there, snaky. I would rather pay somebody else to do that because it's much more convenient for me to keep a freezer full that I just thaw out at need. And that's, uh, that's what I think. Of course, there, there is the fact that they're not as easy to feed, you know, you have to warm them up and kind of dance them around a bit. Whereas with a live, animal, live rodent, you just toss it on in there and it'll entice the snake's feeding response because it's alive and it's a little more like its natural environment. Um, but the cost factor is something as well. So yeah, if you're producing your own, again, probably a little more cost effective. And uh, I think we've covered the major three topics. That seemed to go by real fast. So there's a fourth topic, or there's a fourth uh, thing to consider here besides safety, convenience, and cost, which is how it is publicly perceived, which is a thing. As a um, gold member of US ARC, you could say I, I strongly support their ideals and, and beliefs in portraying uh, to the public you know, a, a good image because of all the different legislation that's been coming down. If you're not subscribed to US ARC, to the newsletter, there's things happening right now in Washington. Um, that's the closest state to me. And there's another, I wanna say Utah. I might be a little off on the state, but definitely Washington, they're working on Ending animal programs, which means basically all educational animal programs. If, you, if you're a guy or a girl who takes animals to, say, birthday parties or to kids' schools and libraries, there are things happening right now. They're trying to shut that down. So I keep a pretty close look on what's happening with the U.S. ARC. And one of the things they definitely uh, say is a trigger point for politicians or for people that are trying to lobby to show what we do here as snake keepers and breeders in a bad light is live feeding. So that's something else to consider. If you're, if you're showing videos of your snakes eating, um, you know, frozen thawed is, it's, it's like, it's real, probably a real slim lines, like the snake eating another animal, even if it's frozen thawed, because sometimes be taken out of context. But if you have a video of a cute little bunny getting slammed and, you know, the snake doing its natural thing. Yes, yes, I agree. It's, it's, it's natural and it's, it's part of life. Things must die so that we can live. That's just the way life works today here on Earth, so uh, that's what it is. But there is that thing to consider where 
the ability to keep and breed and enjoy these animals in captivity like we do can be taken away. It, it's actively, <laughs> legislation is, is being pushed every day. So that's, that's the fourth thing to consider there. And other than that, I don't think I have anything else off the top of my head. It's not like I have a list of things of sitting over here. It's just blank, empty space over there. There's no, I know I, I like to, I look up and off to the left when I'm thinking of stuff, but I'm not looking at a paper. I'm just going from the top of the head here. So uncut videos, you know, thought about writing something down. I was like, no, I, I've been doing this forever. I don't need to write it down. So again, love to hear your comments below about what you thought on the topic and um, look forward to a video coming out this weekend about who knows what? I guess you'll have to subscribe and find out if you're not already. But please hit the like button for us. We'd appreciate it. It really helps our channel out. If you're somebody that enjoys these videos, just touching that like button is something that's very easy to do and helps us to make better content for you guys. So we appreciate it. Thank you again. You guys take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And we'll see you on the next video. Aloha.